the Sun Belt West. And we're going to start this thing off. I'm not going to give any initial uh, indications, initial thoughts, or anything like that. But we're going to start it off with the Louisiana Raging Cajuns. And we'll pull up the numbers on the screen here. Um, Louisiana is at very interesting. Very, very interesting. Because they lose so much and yet don't at the same time. You look at... Uh, Their returning production is 53%, or sorry, 65%, which is number 53 in the country. That's pretty pretty right down the middle, which is pretty good, right? But they do lose some star power. Let's look over at, let's see, uh, their post-game win expectancy last year. This was a big difference. They went 13-1. and We know that was good. Billy Napier got the Florida job based partially on that. They went undefeated in the conference last year. But uh, but their post game win expectancy was eight point two nine and four point seven one. So really, uh, the post game win expectancy numbers expected this to be closer to an eight and five team as opposed to a thirteen and one team. And they had a real problem with playing down to the level of competition last year. They would get up for the big games, and they would barely squeak by in the games against lesser opponents. Let's talk about the offense here. Uh, they're going to lose quarterback Levi Lewis. Uh, they have lost. Uh, one of their running backs to Florida. They lost an offensive lineman to Florida, Osiris Torrance. Uh, cornerback Makai Garner transferred out. You know, you've got other guys that graduated. It's definitely not good. Tim Legger is the new OC. Um, you know, I, I look at this, and and I'm not sure exactly what to make of it. <laughs> I'm really not. They lose the starting QB, two of their top three running backs, their most targeted wide receiver. Four out of five starters on offensive line are gone. Uh, DeSormo was the co-OC, and the biggest thing here is that the rising starters do know his stuff. So that's certainly something good. There is something to be said about continuity. Uh, Does anything change from Billy Napier's system, or do they continue to do the same thing? And if they do the same thing, is there enough star power with your running back, um, Chris Smith, or the wide receiver, Peter LeBlanc, etc.? Do you have enough star power to be able to run the same thing that you've been doing? I don't know the answer to that. Uh, We'll move over to the defense. Lamar Morgan is the new D.C. 13 out of 22 players are back. They play 200-plus snaps. So they do have more experience. However, uh, I mean, they're number 41 in defensive returning production. But their defensive roster strength is number 81 in the country, which is good for a Sun Belt team, but not as good as they have been. Um, The defensive line and the secondary look solid. The top three linebackers are gone here, so that hurts. You need the defensive line to be better uh, because they were number 60 in defensive rushing success rate allowed last year. All new linebackers are going to need to step up here big uh, because that was a key part of their defense. Uh, The passing success rate was great. Uh, They were number 10 in the country. Uh, But they were number 118 in explosive play rate allowed. So that's definitely not good. Uh, Everything else last year was good. If, If DeSormo can continue the same stuff, the same fundamentals, et cetera. They were number two in turnover margin last year, number 42 in penalties per game, which is pretty good. You know, you look at you look at this team, and they were number 50 in predicted points added margin last year. That would normally put you at, at what the postgame win expectancy was, which was about eight and five. And instead, they went 13 and one. They had a lot of stuff bounce their way. Keys to the season here. Uh, can the new guy keep it going? Can he keep doing exactly what's been going on? He has only ever coached at Louisiana. Both of the coordinators are former Napier guys. So, you know, maybe there's something to that. Uh, they went 7-0 and in one-score games last year, and that is nearly impossible. So you know there has to be some kind of a regression to the mean on that. Uh, this team had issues, again, playing down to the level of competition. Is it complacency? Is it something else? I mean, do they think that they're better than that? I'm not sure... Uh, But they just always, they were incredibly confident. And that's certainly something good. But eventually that can get you beat. So recruiting was pretty good under Napier. This team does lose a lot of star power. Uh, I am curious what they're going to look like under a new guy. I've got them at 8-4. and I could see them going anywhere from 6-6 and to even 10-2 and based on this schedule. So I I just split the difference, put them right at 8-4. and That's the way that I'm going to roll on this bunch. Now, we will move along after that uh, to Texas State. Now, 
This is another interesting one. Uh, Texas State, Jake Spavital, this is going into his third year, and the way that he has been recruiting is interesting to say the least. Uh, he only signed two guys out of high school last year. The rest were transfers and a few junior college guys. It feels like he thinks he has been in win-now mode ever since he stepped on campus. Or he just had some different ideas, and and we'll see how they get their numbers to work. I, I'm not sure exactly how that's going to go. Um, but this is one of the main schools that will benefit from the NCAA getting rid of the 85-man roster limit and the 25-man signing uh, limit because they're going to bring in as many as they need to. Uh, you look at what they did last year. They went 4-8 and eight last year. Their post-game win expectancy said that they really should have been closer to about 3-9. and nine. They went 3-5 and five in the league. Uh, returning production is okay, number, you know, number 52, 66%. The offense brings back a lot more production than the defense, and that's even with Brady McBride leaving. Uh, but they do bring in Arkansas State quarterback Lane Hatcher, and that's a big-time step up. 59% completions last year, to, uh, 2,400 yards, 19 touchdowns, eh, 13 interceptions. That's not great. They got weapons like uh, the running back Hill and the wide receiver Banks. The offense should certainly improve from number 86 in PPA per drive last year. Um, You've got three returning starters on offensive line. The offensive line strength looks to be pretty good. Uh, You know, can the new quarterback improve their big play offense? I would think so. They were number 127 in 30-plus yard plays. Um, I think they're going to be better. Like, Spavital is an offensive guy. He's been known as that for his whole career, but... You got to wonder if the game has caught up to him. I don't know uh, one way or the other. On defense, they finished number 120 in PPA per drive last year. And I'll tell you right now, the prospects for improvement do not look great. There's only four starters coming back. They brought in five defensive tackle transfers, not defensive line, not guys that can move around, et cetera. Five defensive tackles. So they are obviously looking for something at that spot. Uh, And I can understand it. They were number 103 in rushing success rate allowed last year. But at the same time, uh, the secondary, already kind of weak. you got to hope that the uh, cornerback, Jaron Morris, is healthy. Linebacker looks okay. you got three guys back with 450-plus snaps. But they're not overwhelming. It's not something that's intimidating to other teams. You know, when I look at the keys to the season, they brought in 17 total transfers. They brought 10 of them on offense. They only signed five recruits, like I said before. Three of them were junior college. Uh, Spavital has done this for the first two years as well. I don't know how the numbers are going to work. Um, but obviously, they're finding a way to, for sure. And what I'm curious about is how quickly can a team that is full of pieces actually gel? Like, How do you get team chemistry when you're swapping pieces out here and there all the time. Um, they played tight games last year against Baylor, against Troy, etc. If you can get over the hump and get some of those upsets, it can certainly start a wave. You know, you can get the ball rolling with that. The offense this year might be able to keep them in games longer, but until they solidify the defense, this is going to be tough sledding. Absolute tough sledding. Uh, I've got them 4-8, and eight, and the only wins I have here are Florida International, Houston Baptist, ULM, and Arkansas State. Could I see them getting some other ones? Yes. Like, you play at James Madison, they're moving up to to D1 ball or to FBS. I, you know, could they beat Southern Miss? Maybe. Uh, We don't know anything about John Summerall at Troy. So, yeah, you could find some other wins there, maybe. Uh, But 4 and 8 looks like it's pretty, pretty likely here. So, that's the way that I'm going to roll with Texas State. Now, we'll move on down to Monroe, Louisiana, and Terry Bowden and his bunch, the ULM, or Louisiana Monroe, Warhawks, went 4-8 and eight last year. And when I went back and looked, their postgame win expectancy, by the way, was almost exactly what their, what their record was, uh, 3.72 and 8.28, so 4-8 and eight there. When I look at this roster, I have no idea how this team won four games last year. I have no idea how they were competitive against the teams that they were competitive against. I don't know how they beat Liberty, etc. I understand turnovers. Uh, the ball is oblong and bounces funny. 
I get all that. But good gracious. Um, they lose some pretty important pieces, both on offense and defense. Uh, offensive line, they lost uh, Willie Tyler. I mean, defensive line, they lost uh, Miles Cole to transfer. They lost Ty Shelby. The quarterback, Rhett Rodriguez, is gone. Um, both the starting quarterback or cornerbacks, excuse me, transferred out. And this is this is rough. This is going to be rough. Um, let's start off with the offense. The new OC, Matt Kubik, he was the OC at ULM from 2016 through 2019. He comes in and replaces Rich Rodriguez. The sophomore quarterback, Chandler Rogers, he was kind of a do everything in 2021. And I kind of expect him to do the exact same thing. He had 139 rushing attempts. He had 175 passing attempts. And he was pretty good passing the ball. 63% uh, completion percentage, 1,311 yards, 9 TDs, only 3 interceptions. He didn't play all year. Uh, Rhett Rodriguez played quite a bit. Uh, I believe he suffered a collapsed lung against somebody. Uh, and I cannot remember who it was. But regardless... Uh, Chandler Rogers was was pretty good, and moving into his sophomore year, you should see some improvement. Offense was not super efficient, uh, but they didn't settle on the quarterback until late in the year. Eight wide receivers that are coming back had 250 plus snaps, but my goodness, do you need some help with the offensive line? Their rushing success rate last year was number 129 in the country. Their passing success rate was number 125 in the country, and their PPA per drive on offense was number 122. Like, you've got some returning production. you got 68% returning production. The issue is that Rich Rodriguez left and became head coach of the Jacksonville State Gamecocks. And when you're losing somebody that has such a specific type of offense, does Matt Kubik come in and run the exact same thing? Or does all of this experience have to learn a brand new system? In which case, are they more suited for that? Maybe these numbers will improve or... Do they get confused between the two and they have to come up with something different and maybe the numbers even take a bit of a dive? Which I don't know how you take a dive from these numbers, but regardless, almost anything would be better than what they were last year. The defense, they've got a new defensive coordinator because Rich Rod took the D.C. Zach Alley with him to Jacksonville State. The D.C. is Jay Hobson, former Southern Miss head coach, and that is a man that certainly knows a thing or two about defense for sure. Uh, they are losing 10 of 18 players that had 250-plus snaps. Three defensive tackles with 200-plus snaps are back. But only one defensive end and two linebackers have experience, and the talent doesn't look great. I'll certainly say that. Secondary was not good last year. They were number 113 in defensive passing success rate allowed. Uh, that's not good. They were number 119 in QBR allowed. There's no transfers in in the secondary. Only two players are returning with 250-plus snaps. Maybe Jay Hobson likes them like that. Maybe it's guys that he can mold the way that he wants to, where they haven't already gotten a bunch of different fundamentals from somebody else. Maybe, I guess. I, I don't know. I don't know the way that they're going to do this. Um, they do have wide receiver Boogie Knight coming back, which is an all-time name, <laughs> absolute all-time name. Uh, but I still, I, I looked at this, and I don't know how this team won four games last year. Uh, Terry Bowden is going to miss Rich Rod and the D.C. The turnover margin uh, was pretty good. That's a big reason why they were able to win some of those games. They were number 52 in turnover margin. And if they continue to not beat themselves, they were number three in penalties per game. You know, they they need improvement everywhere else. So continue to do the fundamental stuff, like not beat yourself with penalties and turnovers. And, and you just got to get better. And I don't know what the right way to go about this is, but I, I don't have a great outlook on this season. I have Louisiana Monroe at 1-11. and 11. And by the way, I'm going to give Chris's uh, records on this whenever he gets back from vacation. So, um, But yeah, 1-11. and 11. That's, that's what we're looking at here. I don't feel great. I've got them beating Nichols, but I mean, their non-con is at Texas, at Alabama. Uh, you know, they have to play at Army as well. I mean, this is just ridiculous. Uh, to go along with that, you know, when your home schedule sets up this way, where you have to play Louisiana, uh, Coastal, uh, Texas State, and Southern Miss at home, that means all these other Sun Belt teams you got to play on the road. And that's just, that's not good. Not good. So, yeah, 1-11 for Louisiana Monroe. Um, 
It's not great, and I know that that's not what Warhawks fans want to hear, especially after showing signs of life last year. But that roster didn't get better. I, I'll, I don't know, at least not from what I can tell. Obviously, we'll see a lot more once we get into the season. Uh, and maybe Chandler Rogers is the next coming to Cam Newton, but I'm, I'm not going to bet on it for sure. We've got four more that we need to discuss, so let's go ahead and dive in. The South Alabama Jaguars. Kane Womack did a pretty phenomenal job with this team last year. Went 5-7. and seven. They do lose quarterback Jake Bentley. They do lose wide receiver Jalen Tolbert. But those two, it took a little while for them to, to really mesh and, and get the chemistry right. Uh, Tolbert didn't score a lot of touchdowns, especially early, which was really strange. I mean, he's, he's an NFL guy. He was taken in the draft. So uh, the linebacker Jamal Brooks is gone. Other than that, uh, you know, Pretty good. They got they got, the numbers don't say it. Offense number ninety three in returning production. Um, defense number fifty five in returning production. The roster strength overall is number ninety eight. But I got a pretty decent outlook on this team. Uh, looking at the offense, Toledo transfer Carter Bradley. Does he take over at quarterback, or does Desmond Trotter regain his twenty twenty form when he and Jalen Tolbert were such a dangerous combination? Uh, that's the biggest question for this team. Uh, is the offense here? Four returning, or excuse me, four returning starters on the offensive line. So that certainly helps. But they got to improve their rushing success rate. They were number one hundred eight in that metric. They were number one twenty six in FBS with only three point oh five yards per rush. They did bring in transfer running backs from Mississippi State and Virginia Tech, so that should up the talent overall. But again, you got to get the offensive line to do something. And with four of them coming back, that were starters. Uh, you got a lot of experience on that line. You should be able to improve a little bit. As far as defense goes, uh, again, number 55 in returning production, 66% coming back. They did a great job coaching defense last year. Kane Womack, remember, was the D.C. at Indiana. Uh, he was a D.C. at South Alabama before that and then went up to Indiana, really changed around that defense, uh, made them rather feisty, and then he came back and took this head coaching job. They... You know, they were number 32 in PP Upper Drive last year, and that was, I mean, I'm not going to say elite, but it was really good. They were number 13 in rushing success rate allowed, number 59 in passing success rate allowed. Uh, they've got four new transfers coming in on the defensive line, one at linebacker, three and uh, in the secondary. The unit was great at stopping the run, but uh, they were number 59 again uh, as far as passing success rate allowed. I'm curious, can this secondary improve? They they brought in a bunch of transfers. They got eight transfers in on defense, and a lot of them from P five places. So I, you know, the talent upgraded just a bit. We'll see. Uh, top players I've got listed: Jalen Wayne, AJ DeShazer, uh, who's a linebacker, defensive end Charles Coleman, safety Keith Galman, and the cornerback Daryl Luter. Notice four of the five guys that I have listed as their top players are on defense. We'll say that. Looking at the keys of the season, it was a pretty good first year for Kane Womack. Defense was good. you got to figure out how to get the running game to spark the offense a bit. Uh, you brought in 15 transfers. 13 of them were P5ers. How quickly can you get them acclimated to the system on uh, – or get them acclimated to the system and on the field? Uh, I think it's a talent upgrade. We'll obviously see. I've got the Jaguars at 7-5. and five. I, I've got them losing to Central Michigan. I've got them losing to UCLA, losing to Louisiana. Georgia Southern, and Southern Miss. And I just realized I have them losing all but one of their road games. It flip-flop a couple here and there, right? It, I think 7-5 and five looks pretty good for this team. Maybe 6-6. Six and six. Uh, You get to 6-6, six and six, you make a bowl game. That is improvement. That will certainly be welcomed down in Mobile, Alabama. So that's, uh, that is the way that I will go there. I like Kane Womack. I think South Alabama's done a pretty good job with him. Um you got to continue improving. You got to keep on rolling. So we'll move on. And we have three more here. Next, the Arkansas State Red Wolves. Now, let's uh let's scroll this thing down. And we've got Butch Jones in his second year here. They went two and ten last year. Post game win expectancy. Thinks they probably should have won one more game. It was three point oh two and eight point nine eight. Uh, but their PPA margin last year was number 113. And that's even with the offense being pretty good. That defense was atrocious. Defense was number 
115 uh, PPA per drive. Now, the offense, you look at it, number 95 in PPA per drive, uh, but they were number 19 in explosive play rate. Uh, the quarterback, James Blackman, dealt with offensive line issues at Florida State. Looks like he's going to be doing the same thing at Arkansas State. And remember, he got injured and missed uh, half of the year last year. So that's why Lane Hatcher had much better numbers. They were going neck and neck trying to get the starting job between them. And Hatcher got it based not solely on an injury, but that was part of it. You do have one offensive line starter returning. That's not good. You had two other ones that had 146-plus snaps. This is not great, right? Uh, They're number 121 in returning production, by the way, overall. Number 115 on offense, number 109 on defense. And obviously the roster strength is not good. Number 105 in the country. That's definitely not good. Um, The wide receivers, Foreman and Hunt, can be special. The issue there is, will Blackman have enough time to be able to get them the ball down the field? Because the offensive line does not look like it's going to be very good. Um, you know, they've got running like, very little experience at running back uh, outside of Lang, who had 263 snaps. But Lang wasn't, you know, he was he was okay in spots. Um, but he wasn't a superstar by any any metric. Now, maybe he can be. But we'll see. You know, you give him more time back there, maybe so. On the defense, uh, linebacker Kevon Bennett is the absolute leader of this unit. He is a stud. He's a beast. If he can get everybody else to play the same way that he does, then this team would be unstoppable on defense. But outside of him, there ain't a whole lot of talent. There ain't a whole lot else when it comes to experience either. Uh, Again, returning production number 109 on defense. Um, The secondary was decent last year, I guess. Number 79 in passing success rate allowed. But when you're 106 in rushing success rate allowed and number 129 in explosive play rate allowed, eh, it, it's not good. Uh, they do return cornerback Sammy Johnson, but they lost three cornerbacks and two safeties, four of those to transfer, one of them to graduation. I would look out this year for Illinois safety transfer Eddie Smith. I think he's going to be a pretty big upgrade for them. I think he's going to be on the field immediately. So watch out for Eddie Smith here. Um I've got a lot of keys to the season here. You know, my question is, can Butch Jones rebuild this? Like, if you look at his G5 history, remember, he coached at Central Michigan and Cincinnati before he got the Tennessee job. He followed Brian Kelly everywhere. He he walked into perfectly set up spots. Like, Brian Kelly moved on from those jobs, not because he was doing a poor job. He went from Central Michigan to Cincinnati to Notre Dame. And now he moved on to LSU. Like, Brian Kelly has done a good job everywhere he has gone. He has built a good roster and a good foundation for that program. So Brian Kelly walked into something that was already tailor-made. Can Brian Kelly find a way to build his own foundation? You know, he started the the brick-by-brick thing at Tennessee, and it looked like it was building okay. You got to a point where he they were ranked in the top 10 in the country at one point in the 2016 season, 17, whatever year it was. I, you know, okay, I guess. I, I just, I'm I'm very curious what uh, Butch Jones is going to do. Last year looked like the, the full collapse. They had nine straight bowl appearances before that 2020 losing season when Blake Anderson got out of town and went over to Utah State. It, again, can it be rebuilt? I'm not totally certain. Uh, returning production is on the lower end for sure. There is, you know, talent in certain spots. If Jones and the staff can develop the inexperienced guys, then you might be onto something here. You got to fix the turnover margin. That was a killer for him last year, number 95 in turnover margin. They were number 46 in penalties per game, so that's okay. Um, maybe Blackman staying healthy can uh, can help fix that turnover problem. He only had four interceptions and in six games played. Uh, but if you're going to be good, you cannot beat yourself. If you're going to improve this situation from 2-10, and 10, you can't be giving the other team more opportunities. So, uh, I don't feel great about them this year. I think they could improve a little bit. They could. It, basically, we know the old adage, right? Uh, you lose big, then you lose small, then you win small, then you win big. Well, last year, they lost pretty big. So now this year, what you might see is them being more competitive in some of these games, but still not being able to get over the hump. I've got them at 3-9. Uh, and nine. Uh, You know, 
SP Plus has them four and eight. I don't see them getting to four. But again, you never know with some of these teams. Like I've got a loss to Texas State. I've got a loss to South Alabama. I've got a loss to Southern Miss. A loss to James Madison, etc. Like, could they win one of those? Two of those, even? Yeah. Um, I don't foresee them losing to Grambling State, ULM, or UMass. So, you find three more upsets here, and you're going to a bowl game. So it's not out of the realm of possibilities, but I I have them at three and nine, and I. <sighs> I don't feel great about them, but we'll see. We'll see. I, I don't know how much I trust Butch Jones to be able to rebuild this. We have got two more to go, and the Troy Trojans are next on the docket. Uh, Troy finally got rid of Chip Lindsey, and I had been talking about that for a long time. If you ever watched the Bet US College Football Show when I was betting against this team, etc., uh, that was a big reason why. Um, just not not great. They went four and nine in one score games in his tenure in three years. They had more talent than pretty much everybody that they played in the Sun Belt for the most part. Uh, it was it was pretty ridiculous. But when you look at what John Sumrall is taking over, number thirteen in returning production, they have got the number thirteen roster strength defense in the country, and yes, that is not a typo. Uh, Number 13, as far as talent goes, you look at what they did last year on defense. They were number 26 in PBA per drive, number 18 in rushing success rate allowed, number 37 in passing success rate allowed. The defense was pretty good. If Chip Lindsey was supposed to be an offensive coach, and their offense was number 14 in PBA per drive, that's absurd. At Joe Craddock is the new OC. He was the OC for Chad Morris at SMU and at Arkansas when he was hired at SMU he was 29 years old. He was the youngest coordinator in NCAA history. It did not work out for him. <laughs> like, it did okay at SMU. Did not work out at Arkansas. Uh, Winton was a position coach, and now he's going to take over the Troy offense here for John Summerall. Offense went three and out on 38% of their drives. That's number 119 in the country. You can't get going if, if you don't start. Right, If you don't start off with a big play here or there, you don't make 10 yards in your first three plays, most of the time, that's going to bite you. And that's what happened to this offense. Uh, they were incredibly predictable. Hopefully, Craddock can do something about that. There are a lot of big play options for the quarterback, Gunnar Watson, this year, running backs Vidal and Woods. Uh, the wide receiver, Johnson, of course. Almost anything is going to be better than what they were last year. The biggest piece is going to be getting offensive line to run block better. They got four offensive line starters back. They were number 118 in rushing success rate last year. They should never be that bad, right? So, I don't know. We will we will figure it out. But um, it, moving on, the defense, this is what I'm very big on. The former Army co-defense coordinator is... Uh, Shiel Wood, he's going to be the new defense uh, defense coordinator. Defense number 11 in returning production, number 13 in roster strength. Again, defensive ends Solomon and Jabuner. Uh, defense tackle Cholo had 34 tackles for loss and 22 sacks last year. The linebackers in the secondary are talented, and they are proven. And Bill Conley said it best. He said they're speedy, and they are aggressive, and this unit is awesome. I think that they are going to have a big time turnaround. They went five and seven last year. Uh, Post game win expectancy said that they should have been about that four point nine one seven point oh nine. It projected SP plus this year is six and six. I like them better than that. I think they're going to go over. Uh, this team, you know, again one of the more talented in the Sun Belt. Like their overall roster strength is number forty nine. Like that's it. The team that won the uh, the division last year. Let's go back and look up at a. Uh, Louisiana, yeah, Louisiana, number 94, roster strength. Number 99, Texas State. Number 127, ULM. Number 98, South Alabama. Number 105, Arkansas State. Troy is so far above everybody else in this division. It's not even close. Um, Lindsey couldn't turn it into wins. Maybe Summerall can. Maybe he can. Defense shouldn't be an issue at all here. Uh, can Craddock figure out how to make the offense click? I mean, there's plenty of weapons. Uh, he he knows how to run this offense. 
the offense was the biggest issue last year. Penalties and turnovers were not a problem. Um, find weapons, put up points, period. Like, that's how you do this. So I, I'm going to trust John Sumrall here to have a pretty big first year. Uh, I think they're going to go 8-4, and four, losses to Ole Miss at App State, at South Alabama, and then to Army. Uh, they could win any of those. They could lose a couple of the other ones. You know, I've got them winning at Louisiana. I've got them winning... Uh, I've got them winning over Marshall at Western Kentucky, et cetera. Like I think, I think we're going to be all right. I think I think this team is going to be pretty good. So that's the direction that I'm going with the Troy Trojans. Now, finally, we will get to the end here, and the end would be a brand new team in the Sun Belt. And typically, we talk about this bunch when it comes to Conference USA. But the Southern Miss Golden Eagles, Will Hall in his second year, uh, might actually have quarterbacks this go round. And even without quarterbacks last year, they were pretty good. Their post game win expectancy was four point two four and seven point seven six, so about a four and eight record. They ended up going three and nine, and that was without a quarterback for the last you know quarter plus of the year. So that's definitely a little different. But uh, but when you look at what this team was. I mean, number 122 PPA margin, number 128 offensive PPA per drive. Uh, the defense performed relatively well. They were number 80 in PPA per drive, uh, but number 58 rushing success rate allowed, number 55 in passing success rate allowed. Uh, looking at the offense, I trust Will Hall. What he did at Tulane was really, really good. I think he's going to be able to do that at Southern Miss, but you got to have a quarterback to do that. Luckily, they start off fresh this year. None of the guys have injuries right now. We should be okay. We should be okay. You look at running back Frank Gore Jr., wide receiver Jason Brownlee. Those guys are special. You got to figure out who's going to be the quarterback. I think it's going to be Ty Keyes. Uh, He signed in the spring. In four games in 2021, he was not super efficient, but he is a young guy. In his second year in the system, maybe he's a little bit better. Uh, The offensive line has, has experience. Uh, they did not perform up to what their talent said they would in 2021. And, you know, will that experience help them improve? Like, all five of the offensive linemen had 320-plus snaps last year. Like, that, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. So, I would imagine they're going to be all right. By the way, this team, number three in returning production in the country. Number eight on offense, number three on defense. Uh, roster strength is number 83. They are the closest to Troy as far as, as, far as talent and experience goes. Um, looking at the defense, Austin Armstrong's scheme is, is super aggressive here and they will continue to be so this year. 11 of 16 players that played 250 plus snaps last year are back again, number three in returning production. Um, they got tons of talent. They brought in nine transfers. Eight of them are P5 guys. And if you go and look at who actually transferred in, they got a bunch of guys from Ole Miss and a bunch of guys from Mississippi state. They kept it in state. They kept it all in state. Uh, they were number 46 in Havoc rate in 2021. That allowed for some long passing plays. As you see, they were number 121 in explosive play rate allowed. Uh, can the secondary deny explosiveness better this year? I, again, all that experience, I would think so. The problem here, and this is the keys to the season, this is a much tougher season schedule than what they're used to. And the non-con on top of that is pretty difficult. They've got Liberty at Miami, and at Tulane. Uh, it said, how quickly can the team adjust to opponent upgrades? I, I, I don't know the answer to that. So I, I felt really good about this team at first, but then I went through and looked at the schedule and said, hmm, I might need to pump the brakes here. Uh, SP Plus has them going about 6-6. Six and six. I don't quite have them there yet. Uh, they need one of the quarterbacks to step up uh, because there are a potential big-time playmakers on this team. Defense is good. You still got to be able to score points to win games. I want to see it first. I've got them at five and seven. Uh, their five wins here. I've got Northwestern State, Arkansas State, at Texas State, South Alabama, and at ULM. And, I mean, the back half of the schedule is just brutal. Just brutal. Uh, Louisiana, Georgia State, at Coastal, South Alabama, and then you finally get your, I'm not going to say cupcake because they're in the same league, but you play at ULM in the last week of the season. Uh, to start off, Liberty at Miami, Northwestern State, and then at Tulane. I mean, it's just, this is tough. This is tough. So I'm going to go with five and seven here for Will Hall. I think he's going to be all right. Um, 
five and seven would definitely be an upgrade over last year, especially moving into a new conference. But this one could get tricky. It could certainly get tricky. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.